Hello YouTube viewers and random Jurassic Park fans, it's a very nostalgic review today as I will be taking a look at this, which is the Kenner Jungle Explorer vehicle from the first Jurassic Park movie, and here it is in its packaging. I just love this box. We get the Jurassic Park logo in the top corner with Jungle Explorer written in white next to it. I guess they weren't allowed to call them Ford Explorers for some copyright reasons, so it's a Jungle Explorer instead. Just look at the graphics on this cover. It's gorgeous. Toy boxes just don't have this level of beauty or creativity anymore. As you can see, it's a drawing of the Explorer in action with Alan Grant driving and Muldoon manning the blood sample missile at the back. Yes, blood sample missile. More on that later. It also shows off its other feature, the Dino Damage Bonnet, with the T-Rex chomping away at the broken off piece. And of course we get the great red and orange sky with the black palm trees in the background. I think this just looks great. The back of the box recreates that image on the front with the actual car and figures and expands a little on its various features. But that's enough about the box. Let's open it up and take a look at the vehicle itself. Alrighty, so here we have the Jungle Explorer, and doesn't it just look glorious? At the front we have that big black grill with the four spotlights, and underneath you can see the headlights and indicators, which are all just basic stickers. The top of the hood has a sticker of the Jurassic Park logo, while it also has these dark red safari stripes, which look brilliant next to the green colour of the car. The wheels are just moulded from black plastic, but I really wish they had included the yellow hubcaps. On the side you can see a slightly alternate version of the Jurassic Park logo, as well as sculpting of the front and rear doors, with the black outline around the window, the slight addition of yellow added to the bottom of the car, and a stubby wing mirror at the front. The windscreen is just transparent plastic, and I'm not sure if you can spot it, but it does have sculpting of where the wipers have moved up and down over the glass, which is some really nice detail, even though the car has no wipers. Hmm... At the top we get the large sunroof which is hinged allowing it to be opened up so kids can insert their figures. The interior of the car is really basic, we just get two grey seats at the front and a steering wheel attached to the green dashboard while the rest of the vehicle is just hollow. Just behind the sunroof is a black bar containing four headlights, again these are all just stickers though, and a camera has also been included for some reason which offers a full 360 degree twist. On the left hand side of the car is just a blacked out window but on the opposite side we get the storage area for two grey missiles, more on those in a second. Finally, the rear of the car features a very off-centre basic sculpt of the back window, which, funnily enough, features a wiper and the black bumper on there too. So overall for detail, it's great for its time, but the interior could have used much more work. Looking at the Explorer's features, the front section offers some dino damage, basically a section of the hood can be unpegged and removed, exposing the engine. This is a really cool feature, I love that kids are given the ability to destroy this thing and, and not get in trouble with their parents. The removable panel features a jagged edge as though the T-Rex has gotten hold of it and ripped it away, while the detail of the engine is excellent, there's even four claw marks scraped into it as well. Clipping the broken piece back on is simple enough, just line up the tab at the back, then slot it down until the pegs at the front clip into their respective of holes. Now, here's where the fun really begins. On the back there's a small plastic tab. Pulling this up will cause a section of the rear to rise up, revealing this grey missile shooter, which of course fires the two missiles which are clipped to the side. Now, for some reason, these are called blood sample missiles, and you'll see why in a minute, but first, take a good look at this rectangular section on the side of it. So, the idea is that the missile is loaded into the shooter on the top, then pushed back to click into place. To fire it, press down on the red tab. The missile shoots out at a very slow speed and doesn't really go too far as a result. Now, remember how I said these were called blood sample missiles? Well, have a look at that rectangular section now. It's red. So, the idea is that these missiles are shot at the dinosaurs to collect their blood? It's a bit strange, but I guess it's down to the whole teaching kids not to hurt animals thing, so this is a way around making the vehicle cool while saying that the rockets don't actually hurt the creatures. Then again, had the real Explorer been fitted with a rocket launcher in the movie, I think things would have turned out very differently. To reset the missile, just pop it back down over this peg, where the blood will be deposited and the red part will disappear from the window. Doing a size comparison, the Explorer fits in well with the 5 inch scale Kenner Jurassic Park figures. Jeez, remember when figures used to look nothing like the actual movie characters? I mean, Grant kind of looks like Sam Neill, and that's vaguely Laura Dern, but Muldoon never wore that outfit in the movie, and the face sculpt is really not Bob Peck. And as for Tim, well, that actually looks more like one of the kids from Jurassic World. The figures fit easily into the vehicle thanks to that hinged sunroof. Well, two figures can, and even then they do rattle around a little. 
As I said, the back of the vehicle could have used seats of some kind too, but thanks to that missile launcher door, you can fit a few more figures into the vehicle in a slightly haphazard manner. Also, one of the figures can be positioned standing on the back of the vehicle and operating the launcher, which, yeah, is a cool feature. And finally, doing a size comparison to another vehicle, the Land Cruiser is a bit smaller than the Ghostbusters Ecto-1. So, overall, what do I think of this toy? Well, it's a great piece for its time. It offers some decent detail, although the inside could have used more work, and the features are really simple, yet add to the play experience. The removable panel in the front is great as it helps kids reenact the movie, and even though the blood sample missile idea is weird, it's what we've come to expect from Jurassic Park toys. Just like the weaponized Jurassic World gyrosphere, it's a gimmick which has been added to make the toy much more badass instead of just being a regular boring car. As a kid, I never actually owned one of these, but a friend of mine in my street did. Every time I was at his house, I would always play with his Explorer while he played with my Ecto-1. Man, I had so much fun with this thing. I'd use the garden hose to make the grass muddy, then pretend that I was the T-Rex flipping the car over and pressing it down into the mud. I remember one day the stickers started coming off and I scraped the J-U-R and I-C parts off the doors. So it said, Ass Park. We laughed our heads off at that one. Then again, we were kids. Don't judge us. So the nostalgia factor in this one is through the roof, which is why I really wanted one of these in my collection, as it's one of those things that just perfectly sums up my childhood. And to be honest, I can't wait for Jurassic World, as even the trailers alone are instantly making me feel eight years old again. And so that does it for this review. I really hope you liked it. If you did and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos. Keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. And please support me on Patreon via the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.